the Startup Hour, giving entrepreneurs education, motivation, and inspiration from successful entrepreneurs from all corners of the country. Tune in to the Startup Hour, bringing successful Zambian entrepreneurs, policymakers, and subject experts to share their stories. They answer your burning questions and inform you on best practices. The Startup Hour, every Tuesday at 9 a.m. on Power 91.3. A very good mon morning to you and a warm welcome to another edition of the Startup Hour radio show. I'm your host, Patrick Chifuambo, and as always, joined by my co-host, Marpech Saka Jr., and our guest this morning, Christos Diakosavos. Today on the Startup Hour show, we discuss using technology to deliver great convenience with Christos, who's the managing director of DigiPrint Limited. Christos is managing director of DigiPrint Zambia Limited, uh, which was founded back in 2012. It is a dynamic, innovative, and an uncompromising digital printing company. It has state-of-the-art uh, Xerox production printing equipment combined with a well-qualified and passionate uh, team to ensure that they deliver the best for all professional, personal, and corporate print social expectations. DigiPrint was awarded the Xerox Africa Operations Distributor of the Year in 2014 by Beats Document Solutions. The company caters to all digital print demands from uh, image quality to productivity and finishing. They pride themselves on their uncompromising dedication to their customers' needs and the finished product. DigiPrint's uh, subsequent growth has allowed DigiPrint Zambia to open uh, the first Xerox showroom and service center in Zambia. The showroom offers solutions ranging from an all-in-one color machines for small business, networkable A3 work centers for medium-sized operations, and uh, production digital presses for big businesses or professional printers. DigiPrint's uh, focus on customer service combined with dedication and passion have made it one of the most shining lights in the Xerox distribution network in Africa. DigiPrint has an exemplary track record in delivering customer-centric solutions throughout Zambia. As always, I have a quote for our guests and listeners, and it goes as follows. What gunpowder did for war, the printing press has done for the mind. That's by Wendell Phillips. Christos, good morning to you. Welcome to the Startup Hour. Morning, guys. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm, I'm humbled and honored. I, it's, uh, you guys have had some incredible guests here, and I want to thank you for the invite. Thanks. You're most welcome. Uh, to start off, uh, Christos, uh, technology, it, it, it sounds now, uh, you know, 20, uh, 17 years after the you know Y2K, it sounds almost like another word. But how has technology helped business in general, in your view? You see, it's, technology will streamline, simplify, increase productivity, make you better at what you're doing. You know, there's a lot of human error when it comes into business, and that's where you, you see a lot of pitfalls. Technology allows you to have that backup which stops you from making those mistakes. It allows you to be a little bit more productive and allows you to be a little bit more efficient. I'll, I'll give you an example. In our Xerox business, we've been operating on an analog system when it comes to service delivery, um, uh, call outs, uh, delivery of consumables, um, all the nerdy that we look at inside our business is all done on an analog system. We've just introduced a BPO, business processing software that allows us now to integrate all of that including our month in billing so nothing is done on paper anymore it's all done through your laptop through CRM technology and that has just made us so much more efficient it just allowed us to be a little bit more efficient and then going back to our our main ultimate goal is to to offer a service that's uncompromising mm -hmm. so for us we want to build our USB on service delivery and whatever we can do to make us better our jobs, to deliver to our customers, we will do it. And that's where technology can come in and help someone like us and, and, and I'm sure the multiple, multiple businesses. Mm -hmm. We see it in the banking industry. We see a lot of software that's, that's, that's there to help them to be a little bit more efficient, allows them to, be, to do their jobs efficiently. And, and in the markets that we're in, we're seeing huge leaps. You know, we're, we're, we're lucky enough not to be uh, held back by old technology. So in our market space in Zambia, I think we've got the potential to, to grow huge and, and, and get the newest and the latest technologies. As, and this is, I mean, this is common across emerging markets. So this, I'll give you an example where I, you know, I see a pitfall and I see an opportunity. This business processing office, uh, software we, we outsource from, from outside, of the country, outside of the country. I mean, it would, if I had the opportunity to buy that software from someone who coded it here in Zambia and I had to pay a little bit more for it, I would. And that's 
that's where I see the market. You know, I think that we've got to make sure that if we can have someone who is in Zambia coding, developing these softwares, making us more efficient, and they're five minutes five minutes away from your office rather than dealing with someone on Skype in South Africa. Mm-hmm. Which one's better? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, we, we have these opportunities, guys, and we've got to utilize them. You know, there's space in our market for technology. And I think there's space. And I think Bongo Hive, they've got to, they, they're really pushing this innovation and tech. And you look at all the master classes they're doing, and they're trying to grow this industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christos, uh, my, my next question begs, and, 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 and uh, as you were speaking, I, I was trying to formulate it. But then you mentioned a, a phrase. You said old, old technology. Yes. And my question is, do you think Zambia has embraced technology? Not not even to say new technology or, you know, the latest on the market or whatnot, but have we embraced technology as a way uh, to enhance our lives, as a way to enhance our business and our lifestyles? I think we have, but not enough. Okay. I think there's still more opportunity. And I think we can utilize it more. You know, we're, we're, we're the perfect example is, is um, the cell phones, right? If you look at the States, they had a real difficult time jumping from analog to digital mm. because they already had the platforms for analog now it, we we immediately went into digital cell phones so we had access and the benefits of smartphones pretty much from the beginning um, and and if you look at most of the tech industries in emerging markets they're focused on that that mobile access point and I think that we can utilize that more in our lifestyles I'm, I don't see enough apps you know I want to see more apps in Zambia you know, self-built apps. Like, the, do you remember the one at TED Talk? Yeah, with the, the, yeah. the translation one? Yeah, the translation That app. was so cool, man. Yeah. I mean, for me, that's that's the ultimate. Like, I would love to see more of that stuff. How, how, how do we... How do we get rid of uh, the old technology, you know, in as we as we transition? How do we... Because cause when you... I guess for me, if, if I was to put myself in uh, Jim's shoes, yeah. I would say old technology means that obsolete uh, computer or the obsolete, I don't know, what not, what not. How do we get rid of old technology? And, and I mean this in the home, in the business, in the, in the government institutions. How do we get rid of new technology and say, look, there's this existing new thing that we need to jump on, this new train that will allow us to be more efficient in a business, in a home, and ultimately as a country? You know what? Old technology, you can't say we can't drop it. You know, what we can do is we've utilized it. We've, 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 we've utilized it to the most that we can. So mm-hmm. it's like buying a, a PC, right? You, use, you keep it for five years. If you divide that cost over a period of five years you know you've utilized it and you can throw it away right i mean obviously we want to encourage throwing it away we want to try and try and uh, uh recycle it and you know try and use a part and maybe we can just find some other functionality for it but but if we look at say something like a government institution um where we're seeing a lot of paperwork and we're seeing a lot of a lot of um uh you know old technology there and we're seeing a lot of Maybe sometimes a file gets lost. I mean, this is very normal. This happens all the time. Um, you know, we can see we need to start looking at the transition of going into the cloud and taking all those document storage and putting it into safe, easily f- so, uh, searchable, easily findable solutions. And this you can you can apply to this to any business. I think that's one big aspect of growth we can see in Zambia is document storage solutions okay. into the sky and into the cloud. All right, amazing. Um, initially, one would think, okay, um, in Zambia, there's so many opportunities, right? You could go into agriculture, you can go into energy. Why printing? You know what? I, I funny you mentioned agriculture. I'm actually born in Makushi, so I'm from Makushi. So I grew up amongst all, the, all those farmers. Oh. You know, I grew up, I grew up amongst all the khaki shorts and the <laughs> and the high socks and the sock tans and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. So, you know, I, I come from that, so I see it. And you know what? One thing I have to appreciate about that industry is they work hard. All right, they do. They work very, very hard to put a lot of um, to put a food on our tables and the rest of it. So, and that's across the whole of Zambia. So, you know, printing for me, I I like design. You know, I like I like uh, creative minds. I like creative thinking. I like looking at something that's beautiful but functional at the same time as well. Mm-hmm. And and you know, I I had the opportunity to go to a design school, and I and I never had, I never took it. And my life has kind of brought me back to to design and back to uh, functionality. And and I think print is just one medium that you can you can you can see that. I mean, for me, my favorite part of the day is. Walking around the, the print shops, 
whichever one it is and seeing what the customers are printing and saying oh why don't you try to do this or why don't you try to do that let's see if we can make it better for you and just try and add value to what to what they're doing and you know trying to make us a little bit more you know just make us a little bit more accessible in terms of what advice we can give and 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 you know I, there's nothing there's nothing more rewarding than sitting down with a graphic designer or a designer and and contributing to to their work and uh from uh two people operating a shop to now three stores all over the place i mean explain to us how do you grow that because i've seen a lot of print businesses in zambia and they all stay small well, well, I won't disagree with you. That I will have to disagree with you. There's some big players out there. Okay. There are. I mean, I won't lie. I mean, there's some big, big printers out there at the moment. I think for us, what we've what we've done is we've 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 geared ourselves and and kind of directed our business into the quick print solutions market, which is the digital print. I think you've got another question. We'll speak about it later. But, but um, you know, we. I, I just want to. You know be as successful as I can and deliver a product that's second to none and you know um, it's been a lot of hard work and I know we started with two people and and, and you know it's I'm, I'm so I'm I'm quite passionate about this so forgive me you know <laughs> no, right listeners fine. out there but yeah. but uh, yeah it's 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 been a lot of hard work and you know I want to continue to grow you know I don't want to I don't want to stop at just three stores you know um, and I think that if you, you know, I'm, hum- you know, I'm very humbled from my beginnings, and I can have to keep reminding myself that you know where we came from and the rest of it. But um, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been hard work. Quick, Christmas. Let, let me take you back a bit, uh, and and uh, and I know in the preamble we we, we did uh, a thorough uh, introduction of uh, who you are and what Digiprint does. Maybe you can run us through in in your own words. When when I hear printing. I'm assuming that I'm going to uh, X Cafe to print out, you know, copies for my uh, research paper or whatnot, whatnot. What differentiates that from what DigiPrint does in terms of offering uh, printing and digital solutions? Maybe you could break it down. Uh, you know, great question. Yeah, awesome question. So let's say, for example, uh, Patrick, you have a business, right? Mm-hmm. And you are just starting up your business. And you walk into a DigiPrint and you say, guys, I am starting up my business. This is my logo. This is what I want to do. Okay. Okay. We'll sit down with you and say to you, okay, great. So this is your logo. We'll design your set of business cards. But that's not enough. Okay. Let's design your folder with a little pocket inside. And then we can design a nice little letterhead for you. And just make it absolutely unique to you so that you can have the best chance at succeeding at your business. And we want to deliver a quality that someone will walk in and go, oh, wow, this is excellent. Because ultimately, the print is a reflection on the business, not on DigiPrint. Mm -hmm. It's a reflection on your business. So we need to make sure that we're giving you the best chance to be successful. And that's where I think that we can help a lot. So, you know, we're not just a print shop. You can walk in, sit down, and you can utilize our experience, utilize our creativity to make your product better. Do you think that uh, now that you are into this kind of business of uh, offering digital solutions, do you do you see Zambia and 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 maybe let's let's zero into Lusaka because you look at a a bunch of buildings around and and we're still at the stage of uh, you know painting on the wall, you know. Yeah. So business X yeah. will put oh this is my business uh, PO box you know along Freedom Way and uh, and and this kind every time I see such it kind of makes me think that we're still in the in the cave days, you know. So, do you think that digital is 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 slowly going to override that in terms of you know the outlook of our? Because you're talking of a business at the end of the day. True. I mean, I I you know I wouldn't lie to you. I find sign writing quite quite intriguing. You know what I mean. So it it, it is still a skill. You know, uh-huh. and unfortunately, it is a dying skill. So uh-huh. you know, and and um, yeah, it, it it will take it over. You're right. And uh, you know, print is becoming cheaper and cheaper. And I think it's becoming more and more accessible. So printing a, a you know a, a one one meter by two meter sign is very accessible these days. And the good thing about doing something like that at DigiPrint is that if you can come in and say, well, this is my business, we can give you some ideas on how to make sure that you're giving that, making sure that that best sign is reflecting your business as best as it can. So it's not just print. We'll also look at the design, you know, and make sure that it's that it's up to par of what you're trying to what you're trying to do in your own market. Uh, are we are we learning though that we, we we need to to have some form of design in, in, into the you know into into 
rather than just having the name you know blah 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 investments are we learning that we need a logo that we need some 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 design that's reflective yeah, as you totally. said you know of our business totally i mean we're seeing that more and more and and we're seeing the market evolve and i think that as our market becomes busier and there's more players in the market more competition is out there and you've got to start differentiating yourself you know having a little sign that just has your name on it is not going to it's not effective anymore you know we need you need to be able to market yourself as best as you can you know it's a, it's a, it's a it's a competitive business a market out there not just in my industry in every industry so you got to give yourself the best chance best opportunity you can to be successful now um coming on to opportunities right what is the best opportunity for an entrepreneur starting out listening well they think okay so printing should i go into the service business first or should i go into the product business Okay, look, I mean, there's, there's, there's room for both. You know, we see a lot of people coming into our, into our organization. They'll say to us, listen, Christos, we want to work with you and we want to effectively become a print broker. You know, that's a nice, easy way, an entry level way of, of starting your business. You know, the costs are low, your margins are high, you can negotiate. You can, if, you, if, you're, if you're a bit of a, a, you know, a, a good salesperson, a bit of a dealer, you can, you can go out there into the market and get, you know, get the results that you want um, by just putting people in connection. That's a great thing about about the print uh, actual the product itself but when it comes to service yeah okay look your costs your your input costs are high um, initially um, but um, you know if you if you can find a, a, a financier or a backer or something like that that'll give you the opportunity to do it then then do it you know the more people we have in the market the better uh, just come see me at my head office at Xerox <laughs> and let me see what I can do for you you know maybe we can sell you a solution Awesome. <laughs> I, want us, I want us to take a short break, uh, but Christos, uh, maybe I can ask you this question that you can ask after the break. You, you alluded to apps. You said you're not seeing uh, enough apps o- on the market in the Zambian. Maybe you can explain, uh, you know, for some of us who don't know how to use an app and how an app can be of benefit to our business and why we should have more apps on the market. Maybe you can explain that after the break. We'll take a short okay, break. Okay, cool. Tune in to the Startup Hour every Tuesday at 9 a.m., bringing successful Zambian entrepreneurs, policymakers, and subject experts to share their stories. The Startup Hour, in association with Power FM. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, a very good morning to you. Today on the Startup Hour show, we discuss using technology to deliver greater convenience with uh, Christos uh, Diakosavos, Di- Diakosavas, who's our managing director of DigiPrint Zambia Limited. DigiPrint was founded back in 2012. It's a dynamic innovative, uncompromising digital printing company. It has state-of-the-art Xerox production printing equipment combined with a well-qualified and passionate team uh, that ensures they deliver the best for all professional, personal, and corporate print solution expectations. Now, before the break, uh, uh, Christos, uh, I was asking you uh, about what is an app, and uh, you alluded to uh, earlier at the beginning of the show that you're not seeing enough apps on the market. And, and the question really that begs is first things first, and 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 you're gonna bear with with me. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> act like I, I'm, I'm I'm you know this is a tech 101 for dummies. Okay. Okay. So what is an app? Okay. So an 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 app is basically just some sort of application that you can have either on your phone or your laptop or your or your or your computer, or your PC, or whatever it is, that just allows a little allows you to do a job more efficiently and more conveniently. Um, we are seeing some new apps coming to the market. I'll give you a good example: is the is the the taxi app. Have you seen? I don't. I think it's called Yolanda. Yolanda, yeah. yeah. A friend of mine uses it. She says it's amazing. Um, so we're we're seeing some really nice. So that's like the Zambian version of uh, Uber. Oh, Uber. Uber, right? Okay. So so we're seeing some um, some really nice. And also we'll, we talked earlier about the one from TED Talks. Yeah. So, you know, we we're seeing more apps coming to the market, and I think anything that can make you more productive in your day, is, it will be helpful. So for me, my biggest challenge is, is the queues I have in my business. If I can reduce that queue mm-hmm. and make it that queue time slower for my customer, then I can then I can make you know I can I can make them more productive, mm-hmm. and I can make my service more efficient to them. And I think we you know we, we talked about a few other organizations in in um in the break while we're while, while we're mm-hmm. here. You know mm-hmm. anything that can reduce a queue, guys, that will make us. I, I think queuing is the most unproductive thing. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> so, 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 Christos, the, this is, I think, this is very critical, uh, you know, to it for, for us to understand. I, are you saying that uh, all these places that I see queuing up, where there's a lot of queues, be it a bank, uh, be it uh, a service uh, provider, example, I'm paying for my water bill, I'm paying for my exactly. electricity, uh, I'm paying for my uh, cable, whatnot bill. 
Do you, are you saying that an app can cut down on those queues? Absolutely. I mean, we, we, you, you're talking about, I think the service providers in Zambia are actually leading this okay. at the moment. And I think they're doing really, you know, they, they in just, for example, your electricity. I mean, you can do it from your sofa now. Okay. You don't have to go anywhere. You know, that's that's the beauty of, of, of this kind of technology. It allows you to do it conveniently and from a comfortable place. Is it is it then that it's it's a cultural thing where when we are going to pay bills, we have to queue? Is it? Do you think it's a cultural thing or it's a lack of education to say, look, if you have a smartphone, you're able to pay for the service via your phone? I think it's a combination of both. You know, okay. I think I think any any sort of organization that has this kind of technology needs to market it, and they need to make sure that their customers know about it because there's no point in having it if you're not going to use it. You know, if your customer is aware of it and you've marketed it correctly, then they're educated on it, correct? Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, do you guys agree with me? Yep, yeah. definitely. So if, if, if you're an organization, you've developed this product, you make sure your customer knows about it, for sure. So that's the education part uh, are gone. And then with the culture, I mean, you know, everyone, everyone likes to queue, don't they? I mean, mm-hmm. you go into any, any, any country, you'll always find a queue somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. It's fair when you're queuing for money, I suppose. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Alrighty, all right. Now back to the printing business. Okay. You know, so initially when you think of printing as a business, um, a lot of uh, costs come through. You you think of cartridges, you think of ink, power. So is a printing business profitable? Look, I mean, it, right now we've had a lot of challenges. You know, we've had um, currency fluctuations. We've had load shedding in the past. Obviously, it's a lot better now. It's been great. Um, we're seeing a little bit more stability in our in our currency as well, which is excellent. Um, and th- and there's a lot of steps to to positivity. But in the last, you know, 12, uh, 24 months, you know, things have been tough, and that 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 um, those challenges have have been costly. So yeah, I mean, currently probably not as profitable as we'd like, but 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 hopefully we'll get there. You know, that's the that's the point. You know, we we we're trying to be as successful as we can be, and if we can. Uh, be as efficient and different um, different uh, uh, cost lines within our business then then great you know that's 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 what we're urging for but you know it's it's not as good as, <laughs> as people think right now but hopefully it'll get better yeah how, how, answer your question how, how, how do you stay how do you stay profitable in in, in tough times in, in the printing business well what what gives you the edge uh, in, in in comparison to your competition you, you, you know what I, the first thing I the, the first choice that I made was I'm not gonna make any redundancies that's the first thing I made and okay. the reason why I did that is because you know we were talking outside before we before we came to the show I, mm-hmm. I've had the same management staff from the beginning mm-hmm. no one's changed these guys have been loyal to me and you know they've worked really really hard and you know I credit growth my business not just to to my brand but also to them mm-hmm. you know these guys are the driving force behind it so the first decision that we made was we're not going to make anyone redundant and I think that there was some positivity and that just made everyone understand and realize okay well you know what we're, we're not going to cut any costs when it comes to the human element of our business mm-hmm. what we can do is we can start looking at other avenues and I think when you have that conversation with your employees they turn around and say okay well this is great thank you very much we're going to we're going to help you be more efficient so all those cost cuttings and 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 budget reviews and the rest of it are come you know come a little bit easier when everyone's on board it's an interesting point that you raised you reduced redundancies because the churn rate of employees in zambian businesses is very high it's like everyone's just thinking okay so where's the next job coming from while they are working they're sending out cvs (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, every business has that challenge. I mean, I, I have it as well. But you know, you, we we really are passionate, did you print what we do? And I've got some guys who are who look at that business, and it's theirs. It's just as theirs, mine as it is as as just theirs. The, the business is just as much theirs mm. as it is mine. And um, you know, it it it's um, you know the. When when your employees show you loyalty and they show you hard work, you know you reward, you reward them back with 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 the same in remunerations or and uh, you know incentives or whatever it may be. And you know I have an interesting relationship with my staff. You know I I look at some of them as my brothers. You know what I mean? It's it's we're we're pretty close. We've had some good nights out as well. <laughs> <laughs> and and but, but 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 beyond beyond the human element of 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 uh, of, of of your business, how do you? Like say in the last twenty four months, as you alluded to, where there was difficult times, how how do you how do you stay in business? You know, with with the, the dollar fluctuations that we experienced in the recent past, you know, with the, the lack of business. Yeah, of course. You know, 
I mean, and then obviously now having this this uh, you know expenditure that you have to maintain. Yeah, absolutely. I, look, the um, the our industry is is heavily dependent on imports, so the currency fluctuations affect us quite quite a lot, mm-hmm. or they did at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, you you just have to look at your business. You know, you have to be very frank about how you run your business to yourself, and you have to be you can't you, you can't be ignorant to to cost cuts and you have to understand where you can find that opportunity in each different line item that you have in your in your budgets and that and that's it basically is finding and understanding where you can find that saving and that's what we did we i mean we really really did our best to do that negotiating with suppliers as well you know xerox have been very supportive to us over the last last you know five years um you know they gave us an exclusive contract to 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 distribute their product um, and you know, and they've you know going back to them and just having a conversation with them, something like, "Listen, guys, you know we we we're going through some serious issues here. Please, can you make some 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 um, some exceptions for us? You know, and and they would. And you know, going back to some of our other suppliers and saying, "Listen, guys, you know, you, we, this is the situation. You know, this is we need to be a little bit more flexible." And they were, and 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 we we're, we're going to go back to them and support them again mm-hmm. because they've they've looked after us during a difficult time. Mm-hmm. Uh, just quickly explain to us, uh, uh, D- Digiprint, uh, uh, we we're reading in the preamble that Digiprint was awarded the Xerox Africa Operations Distributor of the Year in 2014. Uh, how does Xerox come, uh, your okay. working relationship there? Just just explain it so, Explain it to us. So Digiprint is is basically two businesses. So we have the print side of the business, which okay. is, which is uh, you'll find a little more. We have the shop at East Park Embassy and, and Levy. Mm-hmm. Um, then we also have the Xerox distribution for Zambia. And the head office is on Addis Ababa Road. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice big white building. Uh, you can't really miss it. Um, so that that is where we will now sell the solution of print. So if you are a commercial printer and you want to buy um, a production device, you'll come and see us for that. If you are a, um, a, a, a corporate entity and you want to increase... Uh, your cost control when it comes to your print environment and your business, mm-hmm. you can come see us. And we have solutions for that, and you know, we we, we all what we're trying to do is just create cost control and management for our customers through different solutions and and um, and management tools that we give them. Uh, so that yeah, so the Xerox business is just basically a second arm. Okay, uh, so so you're more you're more of a, for lack of a better word, like the official representative. Of Xerox for, for for the solutions that they offer. Correct. Yes. On the African and on this part of the, the in, in Zambia. In Zambia. In Zambia. Okay. So then okay. what what we do, what we do as well is we, it's not just print. We also do things like document storage solutions uh-huh. that we just discussed earlier. Yeah. And we'll touch Archive. on that. We'll touch yeah, on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's you know we're 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 offering a a, a tailored sol- bespoke solution is a better word I suppose a bespoke solution for each customer depending on the requirements and what they need and what they're what 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 they're looking for um you know some of our customers we've actually through the uh, a, a tool which we have which is called managed print services what we're able to do is create a benchmark and understand their total cost of ownership within their organization we take data for six weeks and then once we've got that cost we can then offer them a solution actually physically show them the saving based on that benchmark um and we've seen savings from 18% all the way down to 36% on the print environments. So, and these are tools that are just simple things like, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been to your offices, you've, at the end of the day, there's always like a big pile of paper on the printer, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah. unused, uh, unused, wrong print. Exactly. Yeah. That, that was my next question. <laughs> now, because now, now you, now you got me intrigued and interested. I want to know. So, so something like that. You know, we have simple management tools that yeah. software that allows us to stop that from happening. You know, um, it's co- uh, it's what we have called Follow Me Print. If you are in one section in your in your in your organization, you print it. If you don't actually physically walk up to the printer and release it from the printer, then it won't print. So you have to actually go up there and actually release it. And then if, it, if you don't go up there within 15 minutes, then it's going to be deleted. You have to resend it, which means that that automatically eliminates that big pile. Because if you're not going to go and pick it up in 15 minutes, then it's not worth printing, right? I mean, it's, it can't be an important document. Yeah, save some ink. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, and then, and then um, the 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 next the, you could be say you could be on the top building, you could be in a in a in a, a multi-story building, you could uh, send it to a printer downstairs uh, if you've got a meeting downstairs. You could, walk downstairs and release it and release it from that printer. You don't have to actually sell, print it to the one that's in your in immediate vicinity, you know. 
So we do little things like that. It's people say is it counterintuitive? Like uh, we're trying to save our customers money mm-hmm. uh, by by. But I think that that's the direction we're going in. We have to accommodate that. You know, um, you know, we have to make sure that we're make, saving our customers as much as we can. And cost control and management is the key thing when it comes to Xerox business and the print business within corporates or in small entities and organizations as well. Yeah, and looking at uh, the the industry itself, the competition in the space, like you said, you're not the only guys in the space. So how how do you market a print business like in a different way? You know, guys, it's a very very competitive business. I won't lie. It's 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 it is, and it's also very very aggressive. Um, we're we're competing our comp- against our competition all the time. Um, but for us, you know, the, what what we're looking to deliver and what we're trying to create is a unique USP, and that is service delivery. And if we can if we can always have a toner for a printer that we sell you, um, that's important, right? If I if I have if I have if I if I if I release a, a device to your organization and you buy it from me and then all of a sudden I can't provide you with the service to actually back that up and then and I can't provide you with the toner because I don't have it in my storeroom. I mean that's that's immediately that's that's it's it's not acceptable in my view. So we what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a continuous, reliable, dependable source. Where, where where you will have that service from us and you will always have that backup from us as well. So we we, we honor our warranties um, to our customers uh, if we need to. We uh, make sure that the technical team are always up to date with the latest devices. We have eight technicians currently in Zambia, um, which is more than enough. We're servicing, I think, 500 machines in the field at the moment with those eight guys which is and and uh, and you know we, we're constantly growing that team as well so we're probably in the new year we'll probably look to grow another two people so we, you know we, we're we're trying to deliver a service and what that for me as a business what that does is it creates an annuity you know um, and if I, if I can't deliver you this the after sale service then I'm not going to make any more you know I can't capitalize on that opportunity when that, it comes to money that, that, so so it's important for me to make sure that I deliver the best service that I can to you mm-hmm. and that means you'll never go to anyone else mm-hmm. you always come back to me and and the next question that uh, begs we'll take a short break but I want to ask you this Af- after sales service yeah. do, do, do you think that's a critical important that many businesses overlook it, it, in Zambia I uh, just hold, hold your thought. <laughs> hold your thought, and then also, also, if if, if we if we do have time, maybe maybe we can uh, touch on the cost control. You you, you alluded to cost control, uh, and how that cool. can help a business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, how, how important is that uh, in in a business? We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Tune in to the Startup Hour every Tuesday at nine a.m., bringing successful Zambian entrepreneurs, policymakers, and subject experts to share their stories. The Startup Hour in association with Power FM. Power. Not just a radio station, but a lifestyle. Lusaka's very own youth radio. Tune in Power. to the Startup Hour every Tuesday at 9 a.m., bringing successful Zambian entrepreneurs, policymakers, and subject experts to share their stories. The Startup Hour in association with Power FM. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, a very good morning to you. We're in the last year of uh, the Startup Hour show. Today we discuss using uh, technology to deliver greater convenience with uh, Christos Dia- Diakosavas who's Managing Director of DigiPrint Zambia. DigiPrint was awarded the Xerox Africa Operations Distributor of the Year 2014 by Bytes Document Solutions. The company caters to all digital print demands uh, from image quality to productivity and finishing. They pride themselves on their uncompromising dedication to their customers' needs and the finished product. Uh, Christos, before the break, I was asking you about after-sale service. What is after-sale service and why is it important? Okay, so this is this is integral to our business. Mm-hmm. So um, for us, after sales service is annuity. You know, it's creating a revenue stream that allows us uh, that well, well the after sales service allows us to create a revenue stream to make us more successful in what we do. Um, so if we can deliver a, 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 a very effective after sales service to our customers, whether it be on the print side of the business or on the zero side of the business, it's really important. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we need to be able to be re- responsive there on time. We need to be able to fix the problems or whatever they may be. We need to make sure that we're skilled enough to be able to 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 to, to be able to combat any issues that we have. Um, and I mean, I'm not going to say that we get it right. I mean, I'm, I'm you know we've made mistakes. You know, we're a young business. We're trying to be as the best that we can. And along the way, we've we've made some errors. And I think what's important in this in this in 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 this space in your business is understanding what your 
your customer's needs are and understanding if there is a problem that you need to listen to your customer mm -hmm. and if you don't listen to your customer you're never going to learn i mean we, we we you know we've we've had some situations in the past where sometimes you know we've had some negative feedback but the first thing i'll do is i'll pick up the phone and i'll call that person i'll do my best to try and get hold of them and i will do my best to hear them and listen to them um and if there's something that we can build on and make ourselves better at it then we'll do it if you go into any of our stores you will see my number on on the uh by the till mm -hmm. saying please let me know how your experience was wh whether good or bad and then we can deal with problems and issues immediately and 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 i think that if 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 um we can hear and listen give our customers a voice whether it's a negative or positive uh, uh response um i think you know things like facebook and the rest of it are all, all mm -hmm. platforms for that and you know w w what we want to do is we want to have a discussion. We don't want to have an argument. You know we don't want to get into a situation where um, we're 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 not listening to our customers or we're being confrontational. The rest of it. If I have an opportunity to speak to someone who had a negative response, I'll take it, and I'll see if we can do better at it. And that's the only way we'll learn, guys. I mean, you know, there's a there's a there's a there's a certain culture that you know if you ha you know you don't speak up if you've had a bad service. I mean, you, you need to speak up. Mm -hmm. You know, we, um, and I think that's in any in the industry, but you should do it politely and and do it with, um, um, you know, with a certain amount of respect. And I think you'll get a better response as well that way. Um, you know, sometimes things are frustrating. You know, you've had a tough day at business. You know, a tough day of business and tough day at work, and you want to get in and get out and do your business and carry on. And so all of a sudden, someone will just some sort of service will stop you from doing that. Um, but it's just re it's important that you you know that we you know we hear you and mm -hmm. i want to i want to put it out there today that we are as digiprint are committed to hearing our customers to make sure that we will listen to you and make sure that we will look at any sort of issue that you may have um and try and make ourselves better at it. we've had positive reviews we've had amazing reviews we have people coming into our offices all the time mm -hmm. and telling us how amazing what, what we're doing at our job you know what we're doing on the Digiprint and on the Xerox business, but mm -hmm. we've also had some negative views. Mm -hmm. but what you'll find is that not many people post the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but let, let me ask you this though, what, what technological tools do you have uh, that ensure that you have good after sale service? Okay, so this, this, this business processing software that I mentioned earlier that we've just installed into our, into mm -hmm. our organization at Xerox, what it does is it, 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 it reminds the technicians and pre MC technicians to do proactive servicing. And that way we can go into our customers, preempt the issues, and that it just allows us to be a little bit more efficient when it comes to the service side of the business and making sure that those devices are up and running efficiently and at the, at the best the, the, the best they can. Um, it just stops you from putting out lots of fires. If you've got lots and lots of customers that you're going to go see, you need to see, it makes you inefficient. Mm -hmm. You know, you, uh, you do traffic, um, um, traffic you know with traffic's a big issue getting out there to see your customers sometimes you can be stuck somewhere or you've been held up in your previous appointment because you didn't understand or you could know you wouldn't know how what you'd be dealing with once you got there how so if you're preempting that and you're going out at a reasonable time and you're avoiding the traffic and you're making sure all of a sudden you become proactive mm -hmm. and all of a sudden become efficient now let me let me just ask you this before before more comes in that does that include having like an app that will help you uh navigate through traffic absolutely i mean it, it has to make you, you know, <laughs> so, has, so technology has to make it convenient for you to do business right so this 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 software allows us to uh my my technicians can actually take a job through their phone so okay so the service manager will say you're at um x client um you need to go to z client uh, you accept the job and you take it and you press a button you say I'm leaving now and then the, if someone calls a service center and says where's the technician he says well he's actually just around the corner we can see on the map he'll be with you in five minutes so it just allows us to be a little bit more efficient just something something like that I suppose yeah it would be oh, nice to yeah. have something like that for like printer ink where it, like doo doo exactly. you're running out of ink no we have that already okay we do that so so we if, if you if you're my customer and you're on a management service, I'll know you're running out of before you do. Oh. So I'll have an automatic update. Cool, cool. Tech, <laughs> yes, tech. Wow. Now, um, now, going into looking like sort of into the future, um, um, we had a chat with one of our guests, Joanna, and, and she said, you know, 
print versus digital now we're seeing the rise of digital signage right digital signage all over the place so that is 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 that an issue for you guys as a print business i think i think that it's it's there's just more space in the market I and mean, it's just it's creating another revenue stream i think that what you'll find is you'll find people like say for example Shoprite. you'll see them advertising on these big digital boards but they'll still go and print lots and lots of flyers uh, so there's still space for both i think and I think that uh, they just, they just, it's just about integrating the two, two technologies mm -hmm. do, do, do and you, maximizing them both. Do, do you think in, in an emerging market such as ours, do you think both are still very much relevant? A absolutely. Totally. I, 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 and I think, like I said, you know, if you can, it, it just allows a, a, a vendor or a customer, whatever you want to call them, or a business to maximize their opportunity because they're, they're advertising on digital billboards, they're advertising on static billboards, they're advertising on, through print. Um, they're advertising on social media. It's just giving you the best and the, the most uh, effective way of reaching your customer. So giving you more opportunities and more tools to do that. Stay, staying in the future, do, do you see yourself moving to a full digital solution away from print? And how far away are we from that time? You know, you know, people say pr the print is, the print is dying. Yeah. Um, but you know, they've been saying that for the last twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I mean, you look at you look at um, you look at you know more more developed economies, and you see their models and what they're doing when it comes to print. I think what we need to do is just make ourselves a little bit more efficient in how we deliver that to the customer. You know, why do you need to come into the East Park store anymore? You know, why can't we just deliver it to you? Why can't you just order it online? So that's that's something that we can we're, we're looking into. And now, in interesting future. enough, around um, um, retail, like retail store design, I've seen your East Park store. My God, like <laughs> the design. Yeah, you it's, know, it's you, off the charts. You, you you know, you walk into for, you know my my motivation for that is is you walk into an Apple store, you walk into different organizations and you feel the technology you know you understand you get that feeling you, you you have a sense of security with the purchase that you're gonna make you know you know that this is a reputable organization and I think that the, the reason why we spend so much money on our fit outs is making sure that we um, we can you know that 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 service is reflected in, in the environment that you walk into Mm -hmm. uh, Christos, uh, and unfortunately, time is our enemy. Uh, but one final mm -hmm. question uh, before we get into the startup hour challenge: uh, for, for 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 a young entrepreneur out there listening, or young or old for that matter, uh, who would be interested to start a printing business or to be in the you know in in, in the kind of environment that you're in, well, what what are your words of advice? What what are your you know your 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 words as we wrap up to to that person listening now? I think as our market is growing. Um, we're starting to see niche niche uh, requirements and I think if you can be smart about how you identify that requirement and then focus your business on 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 capitalizing on that requirement I think there's there's space in the in there uh, what that is I mean I, I'm looking as well so, <laughs> you know um, you know we, we we're just trying to increase our product offering and make ourselves a little bit more uh, one-stop um, uh, through partners and through through different uh, equipment technology that we bring in, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, I, I'm not, I want, I want, you know, I want. If you if if you're thinking about coming to this business, come see us. I mean, I, I mean that genuinely. Come to the Xerox office and have a look at the technologies and see what we can do, and maybe we can help you identify that niche. All right, amazing. And now we come to my favorite part of the show: the startup hour challenge. Are you ready, Christos? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's do it. All right. So you're expected to answer without thinking. Just tell us the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. All right. So first up, would you recommend getting an MBA? It depends what industry you're in. Oh, okay. If your life was a book, what would its title be? Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> what could you do with $2 million to impact the most amount of people? Wow. Um, I'd give it to Bongo Hive. Mm, I'm sure they're smiling right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if life is a game, like some people say, what are some of the rules? I think just be respectful, guys. I mean, it, it, you know, that's. I think if you can be respect each other, respect one another, and you know, you can build your your business with a certain amount of integrity, then there's no flaws. You know, there's no opportunity for anyone to come in and question you. Mm, cool. What takes up too much of your time? Um, answering phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would have been paying, but anyway, okay. So if you could have dinner with any one person, living or dead, who would they be? Oh, wow. 
Ah, wow, so many. I can't. I, can't, I mean, I thought about four names in my head at the moment. Um, I would like to. I would like to sit down with Tabo Mbeki. Mm. Yeah, in uh, from South Africa, yeah, yeah. South Africa, yeah, and just understand what his views are and what his thoughts are on Africa. True, true. All right. When was the last time you climbed a tree? Really? <laughs> You're gonna laugh, guys. <laughs> right? On Sunday. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Wow, that's. No, I was, I was, I was riding my bike. I go, sometimes I go into the bush and I ride my bike, and mm-hmm. and I got stuck and. And I was just trying to see where I was, and I climbed a tree to see where I was. Cool, cool. <laughs> All right. What song or artist do you like but rarely admit to liking? You like them on the DL. Post Malone. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool, cool. What could you give a 40-minute presentation on without any preparation? Um, the print business. Mm, nice. What was the last gift you gave someone? Uh, airtime. <laughs> You need to be my friend. <laughs> Last one. What advice would you give to your younger self? Uh, yeah, don't panic as much as you have. You know, uh, things will, there's always a way, there's always a solution. Don't stress about something that hasn't happened yet. Cool, cool. And that has been the Startup Hour Challenge. Excellent. Christos, it's been a pleasure having you Thanks, on, on the Startup Hour. Thank you for tuning in to the Startup Hour Show. Christos, it's been an informative and insightful session all rolled into one. Uh, be sure to catch us again next week, same time, same day, as we bring you more influential business and thought leaders. Be inspired. And remember, the only person responsible for Zambia's development is you. So what are you doing about it? This has been the Startup Hour, bringing successful Zambian entrepreneurs, policymakers, and subject experts to share their stories. The Startup Hour, in association with Power FM. Power FM.